to the Ministry of Agriculture, but also coupled with the Ministry of Finance. I'd just like to bring to attention the issue of GMO. The GMO, or the biotech issue in this country is sadly, sadly lacking, the, particularly in cotton. Cotton is neither eaten nor smoked. There's no reason why we can't keep up uh, with the varieties that are being offered. Uh, the main point I disagree on is the yields of cotton are more than twice what we are getting and the cost of production due to the reduction required, particularly in pest sprays, is halved or, or substantially reduced. My suggestion is that these, particularly in cotton, should be fast-tracked. My second issue is on water to the same ministry, is that I cannot believe that only 25% of the water that we've already harnessed is utilized. The concentration of the budget, which is sadly lacking, should be on irrigation and completing what existing dams and infrastructure have been done and get already. There is no point in starting a new uh, project if you haven't completed the last one and the people aren't benefiting from it. My suggestion on disbursements, because there's a problem with disbursements from the Ministry of Finance, that the Ministry of Finance should consider that when disbursements are done to all line ministries, they should advertise it. Oh, I want to go, uh, Malcolm, uh, yes. since the minister was not in when you were, you know, starting your contribution, can you, can you start again so that he can take note of all right, I'll just, I'll just briefly mention the ones I have because the minister, I'm sure, is up to speed. On, on GMO, particularly with cotton, minister, I believe that should be fast-tracked because cotton is neither smoked nor eaten and we are sadly lacking in yield and our costs are very high and both those would be, there would be a benefit to the farmers. The second issue um, is on the water projects. I can't believe that only 25% of our honest water is being used for irrigation, etc. I urgently request that we complete existing projects and water that's on us so we utilize it, so we get a production benefit to get some money back. Uh, my, my point which I was on when you came in was to yourself and the Ministry of Finance that any disbursements to all ministries from the Ministry of Finance should be advertised. That would enhance transparency and desperately reduce corruption. My third, and I was, uh, fourth, I was a bit disappointed in the issue of the GMB. The GMB is very slow in disbursements. Uh, it might be a financial issue, it might be a management issue, but I also know <coughs> that GMB handles uh, command agriculture inputs for free. I know that the GMB also carries other costs for free, knowing full well that the ministry will be responsible for picking up the shortfall. I believe the GMB should, is ripe for a a public partnership, a, a proper decent pu public partnership. I'm very disappointed that the Ministry of Agriculture has not considered pre-planting producer prices to the farmers in dollars or dollar index for the simple reason I don't know of a cash flow in the current circumstances with the existing farmers, whether they commercial or small scale, that works out for the benefit of the farmer to make some money. The Lands Commission, I'd just like to mention on the Lands Commission that while they are doing and halfway through their job, I am unaware of any Lands Commission report that has been uh, published for us since it was uh, uh, made in 2013 by the Act. The Lands Commission should issue whatever work they've done up to date. And um, the last point I have is on the mechanization program. Mechanization program is all well and good, but I'm very, very concerned in certain uh, equipment coming in and there's no backup. I'd like to know who the backup for, let's say the Belarusians or whatever, who the backup is for equipment, whether it's tractors or combines. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Maka, for your contribution. Honorable Linda Mabosa. 
Okay, um, thank you very much, um, Honorable Bishop. Uh, my contribution is to do with um, uh, in the issue of uh, GMO plants when he said uh, it is not proven, or not even proven, he said uh, do not have a better yield compared to what we have, and they are only um, there for um, the, the undue advantages on pest control and um, some other things you mentioned. I want to know if, uh, Honorable Minister, that is a conclusive uh, remark from the Ministry of um, uh, Lands and Agriculture. Uh, knowing that we've got a lot of maybe GMO maize that we are importing from other countries. Also knowing that there are some institutions that are busy uh, with the research uh, into GMO. Are we conclusively saying we do not need it? Uh, also looking at our climate change uh, with the advantage that we have had from GMO. Uh, to the Ministry of Women Affairs, I would want to know, Honorable Chair, last time when we were uh, in Vic Force, they talked about how we have a shortage of word coordinators, which becomes uh, very difficult for them to gather information and to know uh, the pro projects or programs that we, they would want to do, especially in Matebelele. I want to know how far they have gone. Are all the vacancies filled now? Are the trainings? of these word coordinators done by now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Linda Wapusa. Honorable members, I think let's stick to contributions and not questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Chairperson, my submission is uh, in response to the report from the presentation from the late commission. One of the most disappointing bits, Mr. Chair, is that we are an agro-based economy but we don't seem to be paying emphasis on land. We have heard from the presenter that they, went, they could not proceed to complete land audit as a result of failure to get funds to make the process happen. And one of the points which has been raised through you, Mr. Chair, is that the issue of 99-year leases. We heard 
from the presenter that the 99 year, the, one of the duties of the Land Commission is to evaluate who should get those 99 day leases. And I, we would want to know how much they have assessed so far, but one disturbing thing which my contribution <coughs> wants to settle, Mr. Chair, is uh, people, the, what criteria is this land commission using to assess who should get 99 year leases? Because when people were given land, were those conditions in place? Because it defies logic to say when people were given land, when there were no conditions, you now set in new conditions when the people are already on land. And that would actually jeopardize the program. So I think it has to be if these people are being assessed for qualification, that they are being assessed based on the criteria which was used when they got that land, not new criteria which is now being produced after the process is already okay. Then, on the issue of funds also, we have heard that one of their duties is to advocate disputes over land. And we have, had, we have got, if I got the figures correct, that is, there were about 7,000 disputes reported to them from 2016. And they only managed to advocate over 2,000. And the reason is scarce resource. So if we are going to do a simple mathematics through you, Mr. Chair, it means to advocate the current backlog, we need 15 years more for them to do it, because they are just doing like 2,000 every five years. So this is quite disturbing. So I would urge the Minister of Finance to really make sure that they are paying money, because we cannot talk of economic revolution or economic transformation when we neglect the very core of the bedrock of our economic endeavors. We are an agro-based economy, so I think priority should be given. And there is no, I would say, allow me to say there is no reason why the Land Commission should, be, should not be given enough resources so that this process of 99 years, this is all these land disputes are solved within a very short time because they are actually putting people and nothing is happening in the agriculture and you say <coughs> this new farmers. You know, I'm sure the, the, the message has come. Right. The next one, which I would want to go to ask the Minister of uh, Minister of uh, Agriculture. I want we have had we we have been fortunate through the a thematic committee on peace and security when we went around the country assessing the food security and it was disturbing all over the country. They were, farmers were not bringing maize to, 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 to the GMB. In fact, it was almost out of a target just for, for, for my presentation of say 100,000 tons only about 2,000 were given to the GMB by the farmers. The reason being that farmers were actually fighting the laws which are there. So I want the minister to see, see whether SI 145 of 2019 still says its purpose. And for example, that SI is just for control of sales maize, where no one should actually be able to buy maize or to sell maize except either if you are a contractor or through GMB. And when that instrument was uh, promulgated, the mischief which they wanted to, to, to treat was uh, cost of maize milk to the people. And right now, if you look with the, what is happening, people, farmers are not selling maize, and maize has actually become very expensive. If you go into the supermarkets, a 10 kg of Roland Rich Batawura is about 3,000, which is, if you convert it on the official, oh, it's about 6 US dollars. And if you go for a Gokoko Kumushauko, it's $3. So we are actually asking the, the population to get more expensive instead of allowing them to, get, to buy from the farmers. So I think 
microcosal through UNCJ, this statutory instrument is no longer safe, it's paper, and it should be reviewed, and I hope the minister will do it, and it will also allow farmers to continue specializing in maize production. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, doctor. I think that's all through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, honorable MM. I'll be coming to another question. Thank you, Chair, for recognizing me. I am the Minister of Finance. Let's call us with Kulu Kulu. Uti will tell us. Uti afari imali wakakati. Kuska wasam na peji kuna leka. Kulu yam. 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 No, sorry, uh, to the chairman of the committee to announce the other case. The chairman visited uh, the, that Vumbu team some time back. He found out there was nothing which was happening. And today, up to today, there's nothing which is happening. And even the equipment which was sent there has already been demobilized. Go Vumbu team. But the end of the day, the minister of 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 the the which is happening. The chairman was there with the committee, they found that the Abula King is a gala. So, they are going to take news from the minister with you, what's the way forward? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mpofu. Honorable Chibaya. Honorable Chibaya. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. <coughs> My contribution will go to the Minister of Land and Agriculture. Uh, Honorable Minister, for us to have a, a meaningful development and get the results as a country, uh, my contribution is for the dam construction. Uh, my contribution is that uh, let's finish all the dams under construction now before we start on new projects. I thank you. that lead to a higher yield. And 
uh, so what we've seen is, and I'll give you an example of OPV versus hybrid, because this is a, a discussion that we've had uh, relatively recently. Now, I traveled uh, to, to Gwokwe uh, about two months ago to go and inspect a uh, plantation, an OPV plantation, and I was surprised to see the yields on the OPV were exactly the same as the hybrid. So, you know, we had to now deep, a little bit deeper into that because we, we needed to, to, to understand why exactly are the yields the same? And it always boils down to good agronomic practices. So it doesn't matter what seed we bring into the country. If our farmers are not following good agronomic practices, we will not get the yield that, uh, that we want. So there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just to get a, a good seed, so to speak, uh, and, then, and then expect a higher yield. It has to be part and parcel of, of, the, of the behavior of the farmer. Uh, it also has to do with the climate. It also has to do with the timing. So there's a lot of variables that are involved, but what we've seen is that in general hybrids are, are better than OPVs and that's why we're pushing hybrids into our, our current uh, cotton scheme. But the issue of GMOs, we have to ensure that we complete the research correctly and properly before we subject our people to any harm. Uh, and another thing also that we must not forget is that internationally we are we are uh, very, very attractive because we have a, a, a non-GMO uh, policy in Zimbabwe. Uh, moving on to the next issue uh, with regards to uh, water projects uh, completion, and I think that also touches on the dam construction. I think we agree, on, agree with you, but we, we do have targets, and our targets are two dams per year, and uh, this is what we're, we're, we're trying to boil down to. But like I mentioned in my... Uh, up there in the program, is that uh, the dam is no longer the project. So we're doing the master plan first, and that will dictate the, the, the dam afterwards. So we're looking at irrigation development, we're looking at fisheries, uh, we're looking at nutrition, everything surrounding that. So the dam is no longer the project, but definitely it is noted, and we, we thank you for your position. Uh, with regards to GMB um, and the slow disbursements, as well as uh, there was a comment about GMB command, um, now, what goes through GMB is not command. The, the, the NIAPS, uh, the CBZ does have an agreement with GMB on their side, but I think maybe the Honorable Member might have meant to say the presidential input program, which is solely run by, by GMB. Uh, we are, we have uh, brought in quite a lot of uh, uh, interventions to increase the efficiencies to ensure that the distribution is, is improved. Uh, with regards to the payment, again, it's the issue I spoke about that it would be a lot better if we had a revolving fund within the GMB. But you must understand that we are in the hands of Treasury. So when those releases are done, our farmers are paid. If we do not get releases to our ministry, unfortunately, we have no money to pay. So it really depends on them. And then also the issue with regards to the USD uh, uh, talk, we have to also remember that um, what we do within the agricultural economy has great and significant impact on the economy at large. Uh, there's macroeconomic principles that are that, that play. And so we have to be sensitive to that. So while we're trying to stabilize the economy, the agricultural sector cannot be seen uh, to be inflationary. So there has to be a compromise. But no matter what we do with regards to price, it's uh, holistic. We bring in all the players in the sector. Uh, we bring in the producers, the farmers, uh, ourselves as a ministry. It's not something that we sit around the table and, and decide on ourselves. So it's done correctly uh, with, uh, with input from, from most importantly our, our farmers. Um, the ZLC report, I think uh, my colleague will, will uh, answer, but in general 2019, I think maybe you might have missed it, honorable uh, member. Uh, in 2019, the, there was the first phase of the land report. It was made public, it went into cabinet and was made public. If I recall, it's about 16,000 farms that were audited and, uh, and it, it was for public consumption. There was also another question for, for my colleague from ZLC, but with regards to 99 year lease, we, we've, we have changed uh, the system of on your lease, uh, you have to fill in a production and productivity return that has to be verified for you to be able to, to get a 99 year lease. With regards to mechanization, um, you know, a lot of people, and, and I, I, I was at the AGM about two days ago to the, uh, the ADMA, ADM, and AGM rather, and uh, they also raised the same issue that uh, the Honorable Member raised. Um, what's surprising to, to them, or surprised me at first, was a half a billion dollars of facilities Offered, but this is mainly from local suppliers. So the names of Zimplow, Bain, um,
John Deere, uh, the Belarusians, this is, uh, these are companies that actually exist in Zimbabwe and they provide already the backup support and they have, they have uh, quite a broad uh, um, <coughs> network around the country. So we have taken that into consideration. It is part and parcel of any negotiation that we do with any supplier that they have to ensure that they're not supplying uh, just a tractor, for example. They have to supply the backup service. But we, we're very happy with the, the private sector. They've really come on board and, and they are actually the ones running the bulk of the half a billion dollar uh, negotiations that, we have, that we've got. Uh, the issue of food security, yes, it's, it's a critical component. Um, and, and why farmers are not bringing their maize to GMB, uh, this is also a, another issue. Uh, with regards to the SI-145, uh, we I'm happy to tell you, Honorable, that uh, uh, we uh, are looking at reviewing it and there's already been quite a considerable amount of debate around it and we have called in the farmers unions to discuss uh, the new SI. Essentially what the SI is there to do is not to punish anyone. The SI is there to ensure that whoever contracts the maize or, or sunflower or whatever uh, crop it is, depending on whether it's a summer crop or a winter crop, is the beneficiary of that crop. So for example, PIP comes from government, so we expect farmers under the presidential input program to also deliver the excess maize to GMB. If the uh, farmer is contracted under the FCCA, which is the private sector lead, we expect that farmer to deliver to the, the contractor. And so no investor will come unless they have that protection. And, and that's what the new SI basically is around. It's to protect the farmer, because the farmer also has to be guaranteed a, a price, and it's also to protect the financier. And uh, I think, uh, Honorable Chair, I think those are the issues that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think uh, to start with the issue of the report for the land audit, uh, the commission is a brain trust of the government. Once we do the work, we submit to government through the responsible minister, who is the minister of lands, and we are always doing that. And then the second one, on the 99 year list, uh, we are following the dictates of the law. Uh, the Act, Land Commission Act, Chapter 2029, Section 17 to 25, has the guidelines on the issuance of 99 year leases. And as we speak, we don't have any background. As they come, we inspect and recommend to the minister, the minister approves, we give back to the ministry to do the issuance of the 99-year lease. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mawire. Let's uh, move to Honorable Dr. David Tanga for any comments. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Chair, and I want to thank the Honorable Member uh, for raising those issues of underfunding in as far as uh, the Women's Bank and uh, Symmetro are concerned. I think issues that come out are those of um, the 52% population of our country, um, and you would think that uh, these uh, resources would be deployed uh, impactfully to uh, this particular population. And as well as saying that um, if we underfund, we continuously underfund, then uh, the financial inclusion strategy that we have uh, put forward as a country will fail. Um, I also want to thank the Honorable Member because when we uh, release uh, those resources, they must actually go and impact on the population of women. Um, actually, our women come forward enthusiastically in as far as uh, the Women's Bank and Smedco are concerned, but they return dejected because at times the funding is not available. So I would like to also clamor for closing that uh, funding gap so that uh, whatever we are doing is impactful and meaningful. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable <coughs> members, I think we are running behind time and we need to move into another session. If there are members with uh, two burning issues, just two burning issues, uh, and 
three because I would prefer to have a man, uh, male and female. Uh, honorable um, Lisa and Honorable I want a lady now. The blue one. Assist me with the name there. Honorable Chief. Domestic resource mobilization remains the agenda. But there are also those who are wasting the resources domestically. The land commission, I don't know what role you are playing. I think it's better to disband you. You have not put a report before Parliament of the Land Committee. You can fall under the Ministry of Agriculture. It's a waste of time, waste of money. Because the Ministry of Agriculture is better placed to, it has the people, the architects, officers, and all that. So we must save money in the process. So land commission, the quicker you pack and go, you save this country a lot of money, and that money can go towards more important things, and so forth. It's meant to go under women's bank. We cannot have little things and so forth. Women's bank is doing very well. It's well capacity. You, see, you, you actually did see them. You actually did see them there, a full team. So what did it meant go for? Let it go under the thing, women's bank. And then they just through the devolution, uh, a law which is there, power must dissolve, devolve. The, the, the laws are there to assist all that. Let's also know that the laws that we pass in Parliament must be implemented quickly so that people benefit. So cement go, let it go under the, 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 the women's bank. Uh, beneficiation, Zimtrade, may you organize these women who do tomatoes, peanut butter for beneficiation, right on the bilateral agreements. I have, a, I have an agricultural company. Namibia still wants vegetables from Zimbabwe. And this bilateral agreement was signed 10 years ago. It has not been implemented. And uh, you've got the Zim, uh, Zim trade who are doing that. So they don't grow anything without Zim trade finding the market. So the bilateral agreement, let's work on them. And then, may we also invest in human capital. Honorable Toto spoke about the, the vet uh, aspect, the, vet, the veterinary doctors, you know, leaving the country. So we cannot be educating them and not giving them what's good package, mortgage, good, uh, uh, good school fees package, uh, car and so forth. That's all they need. And then you retain them here. It's more expensive not to have them at the end of the day because we lose the cattle and when we lose the cattle it's difficult to... Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm just finishing now. The other issue which I want to talk about is Belarus. We don't need foreign equipment. Education 5.0 innovative hubs. Why are you not using the universities? There's gas which was done they can do everything. Why are we not using 5.0? Innovative hubs. What is it that they've not done? And you have to give it to the Minister of Tertiary Education. It's practical. He works. Any challenges, he comes up with something. Geosurvey, which is happening right now, they brought it up. So let us also use our own resources. So we don't need equipment from any other country. We need equipment for Zimbabwe, for the Zimbabwe today. Even cars. We don't need to be importing cars. I want to finally... I'm sure the message is coming. No, the other issue yeah. which I wanted to talk about was the issue of the, the, the cotton lint. 54,000 tons of cotton lint was produced in the just ended season 2021. While there is government policy that 30% of the cotton lint should be available to local uh, textile industry, we are having companies sending workers home because the textile sector only gets 5,000 tons out of the 17,000 tons. So why are we not giving all that lint to our companies for beneficiation? 
Not only that, the lead which was sold outside the country was sold for 1,600 tons, yet the, the, the world market price is 2,800. So why are we underselling our lead and starting our own industry? What is going on here? Thank you, Honorable And then finally, for you to raise money, there is the issue of carbon tax. What are we doing? A, with the climate conditions happening and so forth, what are we doing? Why are we not uh, 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 pushing uh, for carbon tax for us to do it? But before I sit down, may I announce to the speaker that the, the thing, the following ministers have arrived. Minister Soda is here with his deputy, Deputy Minister Mugiwa. Honorable Chitando is here with his deputy, Kamamura. Honorable um, Chatamira Komasuiko is here. Honorable Maboy has always been here. Honorable Karwe is here. Honorable Richard Mo is here. Honorable Mamvura is here. Honorable Karate, Parate, Honorable Rozi. Just for the update, Mr. Speaker. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. There's also a Minister of Education. Your growth that I think left out, can you come so that I can write you down next time? <laughs> Chair, 
is that um, the two ministries have not indicated the uh, transformative economic growth. It didn't come out. For example, the chair raised the issue of tobacco. Zimbabwe is only one twenty percent. What are you doing to reverse that as a ministry? What are you doing to, to reverse that? So that we have value for money in our tobacco industry. Related to tobacco again, what are you doing in terms of value addition? You let the tobacco go out of the country, comes back as cigarettes and other things, more expensive to us. Why can't we manufacture cigarettes here? Tobacco, uh, uh, cotton, you say very little, if any, in terms of uh, resuscitation of David Whitehead, for example. Kadoma Textile, for example, is dilapidated. And yet we want employment in this country. The product we have. Gokwe is renowned for the production of cotton. Why are we not uh, opening textile industries there related to uh, uh, cotton? We want to export the cotton. Domestic resource mobilization means we have value for our resources to improve the economic growth and development of our beloved Zimbabwe. Uh, the chair of um, Lens indicated that uh, there's hardly some education given to the farmers. I thought you were going to respond in the, the role of agri-tech. The role of agri-tech. What has happened to my domain? We wanted that baseline of what the ministry has achieved with the given budget of 2022 that was not coming out. You say the, the Minister of Finance cut, 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 but what have you done with that which has been cut? So that when we go into the 2023 budget, we can then, as Parliament, support you for your requirements. I think someone mentioned, uh, I think it was the chair again, Togi Mukosi, this arose yesterday. You said nothing in terms of asking the Ministry of Finance to put money to transform that water body into the various subsectors of the economy. Yesterday I said tourism, fisheries, the, according to the master plan that was done by the University of uh, Zimbabwe, 25,000 hectares of land, virgin land, that can turn around the economy of this country and increase our food security. This is the serious thinking that we want. And of course, the involvement of the private sector is silent, talking about CBZ only. How about other people would like to 
to take up farming from the private sector. Minister of uh, Minister of uh, Women, Women's Affairs. We want to see traction from the money that you got in 2022. Has there been exponential economic growth among women in the various provinces, in the districts, so that we can talk about economic transformation? Please, don't get away from the theme of this uh, uh, pre-budget seminar. And the involvement of the private sector is not coming out clearly in terms of uh, capacitating the bank, the cooperatives. I'm aware that a delegation was set, went to Iran there. They've got very good models on how cooperatives can work and have value for money. You were silent about formalization of the inform informal sector. We are still learning from India, Bangladesh. When will the learning stop? So that we do our things ourselves. When will the learning stop? The same with your GM, uh, GMO. You said the scientists are working. Give scientists some time timelines. It's very important. If you have no timelines, that research is so elastic, it will come at the end of the world with these uh, results and will be all dead. <laughs> John F. Kennedy came into power and he had a target. The Americans must land on the moon. Yeah? Americans must land on the moon. And then the mindset of the scientists in aerospace was geared to answer to the presidential call. And they landed on the moon. And both ministries don't seem to come up clearly when the president says, Nika Inova Kwanivenivai. Who are the Benivai? So we need agent formalization of the informal sector. Back to the Minister of uh, Women's Affairs. Don't start crying about gender, 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 gender issues. We are tired. Women perform. Women perform. They are holding our agriculture system as the last day. She's she, Mrs. Smoot or Honorable Chibama. They are holding the economy in terms of agriculture. So. What are you putting in there? Now, community gardens, Honorable Minister uh, Dr. Mkama, community gardens to improve on the nutrition scale of our people. When you've got water there working together with this ministry, surely you, where these dams are, you find there are no nutrition gardens. Honorable Habitatus, they are not there. And why are they not there? This is the importance of integrated development. Cattle fattening. 
When I was a teacher, I was involved in that scheme with my fellow teachers. We made money. We made money. Marita is a Yes. And it's simple. You fatten them for three months, then sell. Finally, otherwise I'm going to give a long lecture here. The Ministry of Women's Affairs. It hurts me when I see women with these tomatoes, sometimes rotting at Makokoba, rotting at Mbarem Sig. Why don't you have concerted efforts for exports working together with Zim Trade? So that the produce that is made by these women, by these small farmers, can be exported and we earn foreign currency. Why are we not organized? This young man in Juru, I think he's Juru or Mujuru, very intelligent young man. Majuru, thank you, Honorable Minister. Majuru is one of our young Zimbabweans who is forward-looking. Work with him so that we can export produce that are produced by our women folk in agriculture. Chair, I hope they will revise what they presented here, the two ministries, and come up with something very substantial so that we can support their budget. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker Say. I'm sure both ministries have taken note of your very important concerns, and they will surely revise their, their plans. Because what is missing is uh, uh, transformative, uh, transformative programs within your submissions. Thank you. Whether we short one, a short one. I, I was just following up uh, from the presentation Honorable uh, Madiwa. The minister brought in a team of uh, directors from her ministry. Are you certain that your officers in the districts are doing something for the people, for the women? Because I've never seen them being active. Yes, you have brought the directors here. Yes, I've seen them. But are they doing something to, for the women to benefit so that they uh, maybe help in the growth of the economy? Honestly, if there are any other words which doesn't have women officers, I think you should do something and also train them what we need to be done so that the economy grows and train the women because they are going every, every month to the bank to get their salaries. But what are they doing? There's nothing. I think you need to, to go down there and see what is happening. Thank you, Madam President. I think let's just give them one minute to just give quick responses to some of the key issues.
with regards to the, the comments from the Honorable Speaker, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, you speak with, with a lot of passion, and we are so grateful to you for that. And we appreciate that. Uh, and we, we, I also, what I understood from what you said is that you are also on our side and you want to lobby, but you want us to give you the ammunition to lobby. Um, Honorable Speaker, I must apologize. Maybe I spoke very quickly uh, during my presentation. Uh, with regards to the Tobacco Valley Chain Transformation Strategy, I did mention it, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, but after this, in, in, in good time, I, I'm very happy to come and, uh, and explain it. But uh, I'll make sure that it comes out a little bit better uh, in the presentation. But essentially, it's the three, the three tiers that I spoke about, the sustainable uh, intensification, which is the 300 million target. Uh, that we have an uplifting the 1.1 billion to 5 million contribution from tobacco specifically by 2025 and then also promoting the local funding uh, which is the revolving fund that I mentioned that unfortunately didn't come to TIMB for unwilling um, uh, lending onto, uh, onto the sector and then there's the value chain uh, or the value addition which is very critical uh, maybe a good thing or bad thing honorable speaker just a fun fact we only consume 1% of the tobacco that, uh, that we produce. Uh, so maybe uh, our smokers are not doing as well, I'm not sure, but I don't smoke this. Um, but uh, nonetheless, um, definitely in the very short term, we have to produce cigarettes for, for, for export, as you mentioned yeah, on the speaker. Yeah, that's it's a very good uh, thing, very good point. suggestion. The beauty on the speaker is that our tobacco has a great flavor, I'm told. So we are in a mm. commanding position, you know, we're not the filler. We are actually in the quality aspect of the tobacco, so definitely. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I think I want to start by saying that uh, we have noted the issues that have been raised by the Honorable Speaker. Uh, certainly, Mr. Majuru has become part of our team. We, whenever we've been going to provinces, we have made sure that Simtrade is part of um, our team so that um, at least we unbundle what we are able to do there. And also, in as far as SMEs are concerned, we have uh, brought up pillars, one of which is the exports, and uh, we hope that uh, we can also uh, maybe bring it out. The formalization part, um, Mr. Speaker said I was also going very fast, but I did bring it up, um, you know. So yes, we have noted that, uh, Madam Speaker, Madam, uh, the issue of leaving our air-conditioned offices and going out to district uh, districts is well noted, as well as making sure that we stimulate uh, our grassroots staff to be able to execute the mandate uh, that we are given as a ministry. I take note, Honorable uh, Mleswa, in as far as the women's bank is concerned, it might be very difficult for us to bring in uh, SMEDCO under that auspices, as we have created uh, SMEDCO to respond to the sector of small to medium enterprises. So that might be a very difficult one. Honorable uh, Chibako, um, I think we want to note what you have said and also uh, to say that um, uh, I think that is a thing that I want to note in this house uh, because when we bring out the budget and then you see our budget uh, being downgraded to the peripheries so I just want to note that Kutkutor Wasevan uh, as we look at the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Mr. Speaker, say, Madam President, I'm sure this brings us to the end of this session. And uh, Honorable Members, join me in thanking the panelists here yes. for the job well done. Mm -hmm.
the fourth uh, members of the estate, the journalists who are here, and apparently that's the portfolio that I, I want to present on this morning. Um, as an introduction, allow me to quickly talk about the importance of this portfolio. You will agree with me that information plays a very pivotal role in our society, especially uh, in, in the advent of COVID-19. We saw the media playing a very critical role in disseminating information. So in that regard, we cannot do away with the information department. Uh, in that regard, let me quickly go on to the achievements of this uh, committee. Um, in 2022, uh, this is what uh, we did in 2022. We now have three community radios that are functional. That is Nyangani Community Radio, Chimani Mani, and Abusheni in Chiretsi. Then we have one uh, that is partly functional. In Matevelele South, that is Ndepe Manama. Why I'm saying it's partly functional? Uh, because it's got a problem with, uh, with the transmitter, so they are yet to actually install a transmitter that covers a wide range, and it hasn't been uh, formalized. Any time from now, it will be formalized. And again, uh, this portfolio actually did awareness campaigns on 2022 uh, population and housing census and NDS1. Uh, the other achievement was submission of the Broadcasting Services Act Amendment Act to the Attorney General Office. Uh, the Act hasn't come to the uh, to the National Assembly, so we are waiting uh, the General the Attorney General's Office to complete uh, drafting the Act. Quickly, let me go on to the bids and priorities for the 2023 National Budget. The, the Ministry proposed expenditure requirements for 2023 amounted to. 73.8 billion, of which uh, 16 billion is for the ministry and 57 billion is an estimate from the grants. Let me also quickly say the ministry also has parastatals that fall under it. The parastatals are we have uh, the national broadcaster, that is uh, Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation. We also have New Ziana. Uh, we have the Zimbabwe Film and Television School for Southern Africa. Uh, we have a Transmedia. We also have Buzz. Um, in that regard, we recommend the following. One, um, that ZPC should increase its collection points for revenue through mandating other prestatals such as ZESA to collect license, uh, license fees on behalf of the corporation. Uh, government depart uh, departments should pay ZPC for broadcasting services rendered to them. ZPC should ensure that there is compliance uh, in payment of radio and television licenses by citizens. Uh, then we also prioritize the issue of uh, digitization. I'm sure I'm, I'm starting to sound like a track record because I remember last year when we were at, in Victoria Falls, I spoke so passionately about the issue of digitization. Zimbabwe is one of the Southern African countries that isn't fully digitalized. Uh, this project was begun in, uh, in 2015. It was supposed to be completed before 2020, but now we are in 2022. The project hasn't been completed. Uh, the main reason being that there are no funds towards the completion of the project. Uh, Madam Speaker, Madam President, Allow me to say that because of that, there are some 
people in Zimbabwe who are not having access to ZBC. As the chairman of the budget portfolio actually presented before us, Mount Darwin, they are not receiving any signals. I come from Matavelele South. There are some parts of Matavelele South province that are not receiving the signal from Zimbabwe. They are actually getting signals from Botswana, South Africa and other nearby countries. So there, there is actually great need for us to privatize the digitization uh, project. Uh, the Minister of Information should also get its allocation timely from the Treasury. We have seen the Treasury dispersing funds very late and this has meant the Minister of Information not to carry out their mandate because when they disperse these funds, they will be eroded by inflation. Uh, then to New Zealand, New Zealand should leverage uh, some of its, uh, of its properties by renting them or as collateral for borrowing so as to increase their revenue base. Uh, Zimbabwe Mass Media Trust should pay salaries for em employees from New Zealand through dividends from the Zim papers as they are the major shareholders. Minister of Information should come up with strategies for domestic mobilization uh, to competent resources from the fiscals and to finance the ministry's programs and activities. The Minister of Information, uh, the Minister of Finance and Economic Development should prioritize funding the Zim Digital Project. This I address again because it is very key. As we are here uh, doing this project, uh, this program, we expect uh, the rest of Zimbabwe to actually have access to this seminar through, uh, through broadcasting. But unfortunately, they don't have that access because there are no transmitters that can actually do that across the country. Um, then the other issue is that the Minister of Finance and Economic Development uh, should actually consider giving the Minister of, uh, the Minister of Information their, their allocation in United States dollars. As I alluded to earlier on, that uh, the Minister of Information usually uh, gives them the allocation very late and it will have uh, been eroded by inflation. So, and, that, and lastly, the last recommendation that we have, uh, there is the Freedom of Information Act that, uh, that came into law. So, for, in order for us to implement it, this is our recommendation as well, that in terms of access to information by the generality of the public, we recommend all information officers in various government departments uh, that they should uh, fall under the Ministry of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services for easy coordination and dissemination of information as it is, uh, as it, as it is each and as it is, as each ministry and government agency have their own information officers that are independent from the relevant ministry of information, which is mandated to disseminate government information as it administers the act. So, in brief, I would like to uh, I would like to end here and say that uh, it is quite prudent that we give priority to the digitization project by giving money to this project so that it is, uh, it is actually completed time years. And then I would also like to urge the Minister again of Information, uh, the Minister of Finance, sorry, to give us the allocation in United States dollars so that we can carry out the mandate as the Minister of Information, I think. Thank you very much, Honorable Mokone. Uh, I now call upon uh, Minister Chava uh, to respond to issues uh, raised by Honorable Mokone. Thank you very much, Honorable Madam Chair. I'm quite impressed uh, that uh, Parliament is a lot of gender sensitive. I've seen quite a number of chairs uh, of women and uh, doing a wonderful job. I am very impressed. Uh, I would like
like to salute the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Jacob Ntenda, Madam President of the Senate, Honorable Mebo Chinomona, the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Honorable Professor Mutuli Mube, colleague ministers who are here present, deputy ministers, honorable members of parliament, clerk of parliament, senior government officials, members of the media who are always taken for granted and they do a wonderful, wonderful job. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a great privilege for me to be here once again participating in this very important consultative pre-budget seminar. I want to salute Parliament for its oversight role in the budget process in organizing this seminar. We want to thank specifically the Parli Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services headed by Honorable Mokondo. We thank you for the job which you are doing, for initiating also this nationwide stakeholder consultative process whose recommendations the Ministry is going to gladly implement. <coughs> I just want to say uh, once again the Ministry's mandate very clear and just before I get into that I want to assure the House that I do have uh, the management of the Ministry all here, uh, the Deputy Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services Honorable Paraza is right there. And our permanent secretary, uh, that's Nick Mangwana, is also right there. Our chief director is also here. This is the importance we put to this budget process. Our mandate, our mandate has been clearly put by the uh, chairperson of the portfolio committee. Is the, we are there to brand the country and keep the nation and the world at large informed about who we are, what are the projects and programs of government which are being done to improve the lives of the people. The ministry fulfills its information mandate through four technical departments and also parastatals. Just for your information, the technical departments we have are content development, media services, international communication services, and rural communication services. In terms of our parastatals, which are under my purview, is Broadcasting Authority of Zimbabwe, BAS, the statutory body, which issues out licenses, and the Transmedia Corporation, which is the signal company, and of course the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, our national broadcaster. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about the 2023 budget envelope, the ministry was allocated a budget ceiling of five a mere 5.3 billion against a bid of 73.4 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mm -hmm. resulting in a gap of 68 billion dollars. You can see for yourself. This is this 5.3 billion is supposed to cater for the ministry's operations. And yet it's creating a deficit of 93%. Our ambition as a ministry is to complete the digital migration project in three years. But given this budgetary support of 1.5 billion against the 2.3 to the 23.6 billion for that project, we would only be able to procure one transmitter. Under the NDS-1, my ministry is expected to have completed the digital migration by 2025. But given this current inadequate allocation, Minister of Finance, it would take us 30 years to complete the project instead of three years. This means that we will have communities in our country that will not be covered by transmission and being denied access to information. We will also be going against the good tenets of universal access to information, which provides for ensuring access to information for the marginalized communities. <coughs> we will also be going against this excellency, President Dr. E. D. Munangagwa's mantra of leaving no one and no place behind. Honorable members, while we established 18 transmitters, those are complete, digitally fully, fully done, 
we note that our citizens are not fully benefiting from them because they need set-top boxes to access television. And we are saying the 80 transmitters have been fully paid for. They are fully digitalized. What we need are the set-top boxes so that the people can start benefiting from the dividends of the, what government has invested. But the budget allocation has not been adequate either to procure those STPs, which are required. For the record, Honorable Speaker, the Zimbabwe Digital Migration Project requested 24 billion from Treasury and was allocated a mere 1.5 billion. This is money which is supposed to do the transmitter installation, studio modernization, community radio stations operationalization, and maintenance of broadcasting infrastructure. This financing gap for the project in the 2023 allocated budget is 22.1 billion. The project was supposed to have been effected by 17 June 2015 in line with the requirements of Region 1 countries of the International Telecommunications Union, that is ITU. During the COVID-19 period, there was little progress on the project due to the ripple effects, of course, of the pandemic on the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, the investment in digitalization of the TV transmission will enable better quality TV signal. And that's what our public have been screaming for, a better TV signal reception. And this, we are talking about it in all the 10 provinces of Zimbabwe, leaving no one or no place behind. The analog TV will not be able to receive the digital signals and have the need for STB which will work as decoders. There is need to invest in the STBs to allow those of marginal means with analog TVs because the idea of an STB is to make sure that our people who already have analog TVs, they don't need to throw them away once we are fully digital. All what they need is that small little machine called STB so that they receive the digital TV signal. The project is far behind and needs to be expedited as a slow approach will result in technology changing before finalization, further also complicating integration. Skills in this area are very mobile. Globally, a slow pace in finalizing the project may result in the project losing critical skills, which is what we wouldn't want. It is important to note that this is a legacy project. It has to be completed. This program, once it is completed, it will support and promote rural development. It will improve radio coverage. It will encourage, encourage communities, in particular in national economy. It will also reduce downtime on transmission and maintain the existing FM network. Without adequate and timely funding, there is a limit to what we can do as a ministry in fulfilling this mandate. As a member of, as a member state of the United Nations, as a ministry, we have engaged UNESCO, who we have obliged by finding funding, uh, and they've managed to fund uh, to help us fund our community radio stations. This is why the chairperson has mentioned the Nyangani FM, Chimani Mani FM, and Garawa, and many others which are coming. As you are aware, we have, we have licensed 10, 14 of those. We have seen great joy from the faces of the public. People are able to really own what they have in their communities and talk about them in their own languages. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on our endeavor to secure other sources of funding continues, such as studio rental facilities to content producers and also renting transmission infrastructure. Through you, Honorable Speaker, may I also suggest to my colleagues, the Honorable Minister of Finance, to look into the use of the Universal Services Fund. This fund is meant to develop both telecommunications and broadcasting services sectors. At the moment, this fund is being administered by portraits alone. 
for the sustainability of community radio stations, we are proposing the amendment of the law to allow them to source for advertising from local businesses within their catchment areas and government institutions. We also believe the diaspora can play a critical role in this, in this regard. The ministry enjoys corporate support, and in this regard, we have a call center which is manned 24 hours a day, whose capitalization recurring expenditure is all met by private industry. And this we did at the height of the pandemic of COVID-19, when we realized that it was important to have a two-way communication with the public to ensure to, to make the public understand the pandemic and what needed to be done. We had that call center and it's still there. We will continue to seek other partners with a view to establishing private public partnerships. Let us be reminded that we owe the public every piece of information that can help them to make better and informed decisions. The 2022 budget envelope and performance didn't do well. I won't go into that. Major achievements during 2022. Notwithstanding the budgetary and COVID-19 related challenges experienced during the first few months of 2022, the ministry managed to achieve the following. Government initiated processes for the introduction of new players in television, community, campus radio, satellite content distribution. My ministry through the Broadcasting Authority have already been told we licensed 14 community radios and we have actually gone ahead and uh, launched and operationalized some of them. These community radios are language-based community radio stations, meaning they broadcast in the local languages. They have had positive impact, so we want to continue, especially with the impact on marginalized communities. Of the seven campus radios, and campus radios are for our universities and our colleges, six are already operating. Again, these are going a long way in making sure that uh, uh, broadcasting skills are done in line with Education 5.0. We also have uh, done a lot of uh, telecommunity TVs. We are talking here of private TVs. We have licensed six. And already, those of you who have seen the ZTN, 3K TV, and NRA TV, and many more coming. We also have launched Jive TV, and this is very good. It gives local content creators, producers, an opportunity, and us artists. Those who stay a little long before sleeping, you have watched Jive TV with all our artists having an opportunity to showcase what they are very good at. We also have conducted training for volunteer community radio broadcasters. We are not leaving them behind once we give them a license. We are making sure that we train them. Uh, we also train them in studio ticket, ethical issues, the role of community radio, also the languages to be used. All the, and we as a ministry are working on a branding Zimbabwe project. You are aware, honorable members, we have launched that Brand Zimbabwe project, which we all need to work together to change the perceptions of our country. Allow me now, honorable members, to speak to some of the ministry's outputs. And I think most of these have actually been mentioned by the uh, chairperson, and I don't need to go through them. Honorable members, the installation of state-of-the-art broadcasting infrastructure the production, availability, and distribution of engaging audiovisual content are critical components of promoting access to information by citizens. In this vein, part of the funds allocated to the ministry have been prioritized for the rehabilitation of our ministry's production center, which is along Mazoe, and we are also making sure that Tessa, which is the Zimbabwe Film and Television School of Southern Africa, is also capitalized because we know there's a lot of talent there, out there. We have young people, we need to harness that talent, and we've got this school to make sure that we also build another Zollywood, or whatever you call them. In Nigeria, it's Nollywood and uh, Hollywood and uh, in other places, and we have that talent in this country. And I must say, we need more money. Only 11.59% of the bid was allocated, and this is not sufficient. Government programs coverage, we do a lot. I know uh, sometimes, honorable members, when you see these cameras and uh, everything done, it's like it's easy, but this is the work which is done behind 
in the ministry and it needs money. The ministry submitted a certain amount for the purposes of supporting government programs and it was allocated a mere 613 million, translating to 12.3% of, of our total bid. This will actually hamper a lot of effort as we go. Worth noting in, is the fact that with the allocated resources, the ministry will only be able to cover just a few national programs against anticipated increased activities in view of the 2023 harmonized elections. Officers will also not be able to attend government events for routine information gathering, media facilitation and press management if our budget is not revised. Covering every corner of the country requires mobility, honorable members, but the ministry's current fleet of vehicles mostly was procured in 2008 and has since outlived its lifespan and maintenance costs are very high. So we really need like 82 vehicles to make sure that we carry out our mandate. We have got information officers in all our districts and those information officers, in order for them to carry out their mandate, they need to be to achieve their tools of trade. Through our district information officers and provincial officers, we play a significant role in information dissemination in the communities, and that has a huge budgetary implication. Uh, the mandatory provision of PA system, we do provide all the PA systems at all government functions. And uh, this needs, again, it's a huge cost to our ministry. The ministry is prioritizing to purchase a dynamic and versatile PA system. We can't continue to hire our PA systems all the time. And we are saying by purchasing the PA system in early in the, in the budget, that should really make the whole sound system demands in 2023 better. We also host opinion leaders uh, in our country. It's important to make sure that we change the, the perception which has been put out there about our country. This year, the ministry hosted a popular Ghanaian vlogger, YouTube, whatever you call them, Wodemaya, whose posts on Zimbabwe attracted millions of viewers. The ministry would like to host more of those opinion leaders. Again, no budget, a significant budget was, uh, put, was approved for that. Transmedia is our signal company. Let me talk a little bit about ZBC before I end, Honorable uh, Speaker. The Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation submitted a bid of 31 billion and was allocated only 200 million, resulting in a gap of 30 billion. The corporation is seriously incapacitated in terms of mobility owing to the shortage of vehicles and news gathering equipment such as cameras. This greatly affects service delivery of the national broadcaster. Core employees do not have adequate vehicles for work-related assignments and on several occasions critical assignments are not tackled due to the shortage of vehicles. The available vehicles are in deplorable state and now costly to maintain. <laughs> The situation at ZBC needs attention. And being the national broadcaster, we had hoped the corporation got the funding it bidded for to ensure fair coverage of the elections, leaving no one and no place behind. With the allocated granted, I'm sorry to say, the nation should expect much more from ZBC. As I end, currently ZBC uses pirated software and this compromises the quality of content. An Adobe Creative Cloud Side Suite is the key software required for both radio and television studio playout and is also required for both Pocket Hill and Montrose. The studios will need some capacitation to enhance service delivery. Outside the DTT project, some major refurbishments and technical upgrades are required to ensure the studios are up to the minimum standards. And with a constrained budget, this will not be possible. In an effort to enhance its revenue collection, ZBC is not sitting. They have come up with a lot of initiatives. They have embarked on a number of initiatives such as engaging Zinara demand ZBC radio license first before they are allowed to renew their license. 
They are also working with the Zimbabwe Republic Police on the road to enhance the operations revenue collection. More compliance officers have also been recruited in this regard. In conclusion, Your Excellency. Uh, in conclusion. Honorable members, I wish to thank the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services, headed by Honorable Mokone, for his telling work in ensuring that our people enjoy the freedom of expression and have access to information which will enable them to effectively contribute to the national vision of becoming an empowered and prosperous upper middle income society by 2030. Honorable members, I hope my presentation has strongly made the case for revisiting and revising the budget allocation upwards to what we bid for. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chamba. Uh, although you have taken other people's time, I knew it. Uh, honorable members, Mr. Speaker, say with your indulgence, Madam President, uh, we are going to have plenary session for the for this committee only now before we go for lunch. Then after lunch, we will come back and continue with our program. I thank you, sir. Uh, honorable members, let's now uh, begin our plenary session. I can see Honorable Molokele, Honorable Pariwa, uh, Parliament staff, can you assist me? Honorable Tekeshe, Honorable Matanose, one lift. I'll take five people at a time. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I personally feel this is one of the ministries that for Thank you. Thank you. I personally feel that this is one of the ministries that we should reduce funding for, for the following reasons. One, it is not serving the nation, it is serving one political party. Two, technology has moved, it's now cheaper to broadcast. in terms of having all the languages 
covered on uh, the national broadcast so that we don't leave anyone behind. And uh, yes, I know he has made an attempt. Now we see sign language, etc. That is in a, 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 a term up. And I think on languages so that we talk the line in terms of the constitution of 2013. Uh, I hope and trust that you'll be able to execute that. And uh, of course, I know it means more money. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Bariwa. Honorable Matabas.
Is this the position the party takes or the government? By the time you do that, I've already sent mine. So to me, there's going to be rebranding. So without considering the impact of social media and how you're going to beat social media, then there's no point in really putting in money. And I do concur with, uh, because there's no point putting in money. Honorable Tekesh, point is very important. We are legislators, we, 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 we think pass uh, 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 votes with uh, the budget, but at the same time we're not incorporated when it comes to media. We are not. So I've decided I run my own media space, which is probably the better following than the state-owned media. So who needs it today? The media? So you have created champions in, in media, social media, and for as long as you don't consider that, it does not work. The equipment from Iran came, is absolute. So the investment today, is it really worth it? You've got the zinc papers building which is there. Today's ways of journalism don't need you to be in an office. You, are, you get people in the rural areas to just send you a picture and a story. Then you just write it where you are. What, what, what our office is needed for. So you're spending too much time on infrastructure which you don't need today. So I think you need to really uh, come up with a new way forward. Otherwise, I think Zimbabwe has received a lot of bad publicity but while we were on state-owned media, what has it done? Whether you like it or not, I think we must also learn from the, uh, the uh, Professor Moy and George Charamba. When at the height of Zimbabwe's publicity being the worst in the world, they did maintain a certain narrative which, which made this country be what it is. The image of the country is through the media. Rambai Makashinga, Rambai Makashinga, our local artists, how are you giving them money for them to protect their, their professions and so forth? You need to pay them well as well so that they can earn a living from what they do. Thank you. social media and have more modern content. Um, when I have interviews with um, the journalists, I'm a bit concerned because they ask all the wrong questions and they expect you to answer right questions. So I think they need also capacity building so that they get right questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, mine is not a question, mine is a suggestion in support in, of a lot of what the members of Parliament have said. The issue of social media is far outstripping this ministry. The ministry is too slow to get on board. My suggestion is the collapse of this ministry into the ICT or the ITC ministry. Thank you.
<laughs> yeah. Radical approaches. There was something I have the mic already, honorable chair, so I can probably proceed. Honorable chair, yes, proceed. thank you, honorable chair. Uh, my contribution, honorable chair, is I think as a people, as the members of parliament, we need to be serious. I know people will say, woo, woo. I am ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> National. I think we need to separate formal media from social. National media has got a duty to articulate government policy and national interests. And it can never be substituted by social media. Right now you see what is happening in the world. We are all confused. 90% of you in here, you are confused. Right. And, and why are you asking? By following what propaganda we are getting from Western media. And that is what majority of us believe. But those Western media, they are articulating national interests. So we have to invest in our national broadcasting, national media to articulate national interests. You don't plan in a social media or on a TikTok, then you are not worth to be a leader. <laughs> I tell you, you need to take, we need to take, we need to take this seriously. No one, no one, if you run a country on TikTok, on social media, then I don't know which country you are planning for. So I think I, I, I would want to propose Madam Chair, that we definitely need to invest and to capacitate our national broadcaster so that they can actually achieve their mandate. Never mind other mistakes which they can do, but it does not take away the need for us to have a robust national media which will articulate national interests. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thank you, Madam Chair. At the risk of severing all my ties with Honorable Moleketi, I want to pray the Minister of Finance to fund the Ministry of Information and Publicity. Yes. If not for anything, at least Minister of Finance is for digital migration. We saw during COVID-19, how the rural kids were left behind in terms of their education because they had no access to ICT, as a result, no access to education, and we saw how much of their futures were not destroyed but totally vandalized because of that lack of education. So, Minister of Finance, Forget what you said about ZBC, fund this ministry, let them carry out digital migration, let all our children, whether they're in the rural or in the least developed places, no one and no place must be left behind. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, I think we have exhausted all our suggestions. Let me now call upon the Speaker and the mm. President of Senate whether they have any interventions. No, no. I thank you, sir. No, no, no. The Minister first. Minister. The Minister. The Minister first. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Honorable Minister, can you respond to the issues which were raised by the Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable, for giving me that opportunity. And uh, I want to, generally, I want to thank Honorable Members for the support uh, so that at least our budget can be revisited and be revised. Let me start off by the last speaker, Honorable. I didn't manage to get his name, but uh, the one in the back, I really want to thank you. Digital
to our migration is really needs to come to completion. We need to make sure that our information is moved from analog to digital. If we don't do that as a country, we may lose our young generation. We totally agree that our young generation, they are always stuck to their gadgets, and we need to make sure that historical information about this country, who we are, where we are coming from, where we are, and where we want to go, is all digitalized so that at least our young generation cannot depend on foreign content, on Facebook, on Twitter. So it's very critical that digitalization should be finalized. Thank you very much. Then I go to Honorable Dr. Senator Mawetera. I can't say that any better. Uh, there is certainly the importance of uh, the national broadcaster, national newspapers cannot be overemphasized. I want just to honorable members to know that we are not ignoring social media. As a country, we know the importance that the social media has brought in a lot of things and we are doing a lot and I'll talk about that later. But just to say it is critical that we continue to feed the nation with the good narrative. There is so much which happens. People, journalists who write on social media are not accountable to anyone. They, and you need to understand that if a journalist is going to write in a newspaper or if a journalist is going to talk on the TV or any other TVs which we have licensed, the content, they, if, you, if there's anybody who feels aggrieved, you can actually go and be, that can be addressed. So I just want you to know that for your information, Radio Zimbabwe has got a following of more than 5 million Zimbabweans. Newspapers, the Herald and many other newspapers are still in business and are able to sell their newspapers. So the need to have that, uh, uh, that, that cannot be overemphasized. We will obviously need to continue to uh, capacitate national broadcaster and national media. Thank you very much, Honorable Dr. Awetera, for that. Honorable Makari, once again, I want to thank you for supporting us and also imploring the Ministry of Finance to make sure that there is uh, more money given to the Ministry to carry out our mandate. On the social media issue, I want to tell you that we as a Ministry, we have a website. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. You have, we are constantly giving timely information. Zim papers has got also is online. There is information which is given timely, and this is a good narrative educating people of this country about what's going on in their own country. We cannot depend on people on social media only. People who are writing in a corner somewhere outside the country or somewhere I don't know where, and they are not accountable to any of our people. So we are on social media to continue to correct the narrative. And I want to touch this together with Honorable Tegeshe. As a ministry, we are constantly looking at making sure that there is coverage of everyone. We, and I will speak to that, no matter how you say no, but as a ministry, we are doing it. The process of ensuring fair coverage, the process of ensuring, ensuring proper coverage, fair coverage, has started. Just for those who care to have seen two weeks ago, the Ministry of Information, in collaboration with Zimbabwe Institute, organized a workshop in Kanoma that brought together all political parties, their representations, and also members of parliament, the members of media, to discuss how we should come up with a peace charter, especially as we go towards elections. That all political parties should actually guarantee the safety of journalists. Because as a ministry, we are very much concerned about the safety of journalists. The media, members of the media, whenever they encounter problems, they quickly get in touch with us. Our doors are open. And like what Honorable Temper spoke about what was happening in the First Republic, the Second Republic, we have opened up our doors. There is no public more. There is no public media or private media. I am the Minister of both public and private. As such, we interact with 